Right, so what we're going to do this time around is do an activation. So it's just a sequence of exercises that um, slightly different from the stuff that we do on Movement Rev normally um, and suitable for anyone who wants to go out for a run uh, straight from their house and just know that the body is warmed up a little bit. Um, I'll try and keep it concise enough but give you enough information as well <clears throat> as, as well as the rationale of what you're doing and why you're doing it, okay? So that you need to know that for the different types of ailments that the movements or the types of exercise will be relevant to, if that makes sense. So let's start ourselves off with a jogging on the spot. Now, you can still do an activation if you have a lower body injury, but you'll just have to, do, like a warm up like this, you'll just do it on the bike or something else, you know, if, if you're in the gym. But if you're at home and able, you can do jogging. Okay. Just to get things warmed up. About 20 seconds or thereabouts. Okay, so then we're just going to go into a few squat holes. So starting down, not too low. Okay, squat holes, nothing crazy. But again, just getting the, the angles good, getting good foot pressures. And then as you feel you can get a bit lower down, you're going to hold. Okay, so all you're doing is getting the body, getting your muscle activation good, getting the foot distribution pressures good, and feeling strong in those different positions. Down, hold, and back up. Okay, so to go through from high to low as you normally go, once the back is flat, with the good foot pressures, and that's just syncing everything together. And then we'll just do five normal squats down. Slowly down and back up again. So you know you have that, okay? So that's good. We go back onto the jog on the spot. And then we progress onto our lunge, our split squat hold, okay? So lunge hold here. Now you can do these statically, just like this. So hold for about five seconds into the position, good foot pressures again. But there's also nothing wrong with holding the position and challenging the balance or the core by doing a funny wave, is that all right? Back on the other side, a couple of movements either side, side to side, and you're just challenging that postural sway, because if you're running, the legs are on the ground and the upper body is doing something different. All right, so running this way, or side bending this way, if you're reaching for a ball over the air in a pitch or something like that. So again, just five reps each side. Don't be too pedantic about the position. You can vary the height from high to middle to low, but you can see I'm on the ball of that four foot as well. It's you know a bit easier if the heel is on the floor, but if you're on the ball of the feet, it's a bit more challenging for all the muscles in that leg. Okay, so this will be the last of them. So that's that split squat, hold in a position with the upper body movement. Okay, pretty handy, and you feel a nice little bit of residual fire up or activation or a burny, a little bit of mild burn if you want to call it that. Then we're going to go to the front core, okay, and this activation sequence is just one that I've put together. You, you can mix it up any way you like, you don't have to do it, but this is for the front core now, right? So we've done the legs there to some, some extent for, on a low level. Now we're going to do a slow mountain climber. So what are we doing here? The lower tummy is nice and solid. Okay, we're not letting ourselves drop down like that and do it this position. We want to make sure that tuck the hips under, give a bit of a squeeze in the glutes, and you're into your slow mountain climbers. Okay, and we'll do a little bit of rotation on that one as well. All right, just bring a little bit of rotation into the equation there too. So, so. We're working that front system, the arms, chest is all getting activated. Okay, and we want to get our breathing patterns nice and controlled during those flows as well. So we'll just do one more round of that. And you can do whatever position you want. Okay, out to the side, knee up to the elbow, right? Or across, reaching across side to side. Whatever way you want to do it. Okay, so that just activates the front core. 
Then what we'll do is grab your mini bands and just step into those and we'll activate the lateral hips, okay? So you can go bends at the knees or bends at the feet. So it's one that we just slightly modified a bit. Okay, so you're gonna go side monster walks or crab walks, keeping the feet in line. All right, upper body stays dead straight. So you're not seeing this kind of a tick-tock movement up top. Okay. And the bend is towards the front of the foot, okay? Now can you see that there? Towards, just behind the, the line of the first knuckles, okay? Okay, and you're getting those external rotators in the hip working there in that position as well. And then by all means, that's just purely side to side version of it. Then do a zigzag step. Okay, try and control that trailing leg. Just at that tempo, okay? A lot of work going on in the deep hips, deep hip muscles. And the most important thing there is that if you're feeling tired, don't overarch, you know, because you want to keep that neutral pelvic position then as well, or close to it, relatively speaking. Okay, so that's some mini band work. And then on this, for the mini bands then as well, we're going to do a little bit of hip flexor work, okay? So hip flexor run technique. Okay, so front, front on your opposite hand, opposite knee. Control, stay strong, back down, back down, okay? Opposite hand, opposite knee. Nice and solid. And the whole time there, you're trying to keep a little bit of a forward lean, oops as well okay so keep that little bit of a forward lean definitely don't want your back here that's going to indicate that hip flexor is weaker if you're getting ready for sprinting weight on that right foot in this instance right weight on the left foot leaning forward you see my forward lean okay so you're activating hip flexor challenge the balance challenges the side core lovely little exercise and that's what we're doing there now so we're going to go onto the side plank now as well. So this is just a, a nice fire up that we like to do. So onto the, you can either go on the side of the knee or the side of the leg, okay? So we go elbow to knee for four repetitions. Elbow to knee, drop yourself down. The next one is our hip thrust. Up you come and you're gonna go one, two, three, four, Okay, so these are all bread and butter movements that we do in our movement rev classes all the time, three times a week. Next one then is uh, one side of running, one, two, three, four, and lower down. And the last one then is arm and leg out in the front, out behind and hold, out in front and hold, out behind and hold. Okay, so you got like four different exercises, four different variations of your side plank on the right side there. And what we'll do, we'll just do the left side. We'll keep it, keep it together. Scoot yourself around, lift up, and you go elbow to knee on this side. Okay, reach past your head, up and down, and down you go. Okay, next one up you come. Uh, you're sorry, hip thrusts. One, two, three, four, and down you go. And then we're going to go one sided running. Bring your hand past your head and swing. Two, three, four, always with control. And on the lowering phase as well. And then arm and leg in front, arm and leg behind, out in front. Out behind, in front, oh, four reps, that's it, okay? So you activated the side plank, side core there. Then you can do posterior chain, so that's the hip thrust, okay? So depending on your levels or whatever you're at, you can just simply do bridges and be there through the heel or the forefoot, 
okay up hold at the top position slowly lower through the toes or forefoot top position so you're seeing a good hip hip and knee and shoulder all in line not drop down here halfway now if they're too easy you can definitely just do the single leg versions so you're going up heel toe on the single leg slowly up and down I would much prefer that you did it slowly during the activations again five reps is fine so up the side heel toe five times keeping that nice pressure here through the hip flexor through the front core all right so that's two sets of five repetitions of those each side grand job right so we go back up now and we get jogging again so we've literally activated everything there and just kept it to five reps ish if you feel you need more do more but if you're generally weak you just need to do more of it in the midweek in between okay to, to make up that difference that just takes a little bit of focused attention so then what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in the power x um, the power component so if you don't if you just want to do that can, that should be sufficient for the vast majority of people if you just want to make sure that you prime up the tendons excuse me and the achilles and stuff like that uh, if you have a cranky achilles you'll do your your isometrics to the heel you'll do your your wall sits or your eyes or your quad extensions to uh, warm up your uh, patellar tendon that's for those particular people and you'll know what I'm talking about there if not we're just going to go straight uh, we we'll just go straight into the, the double hops the pogo hops okay so just double hops six or eight double hops short contact time getting off the ground nice and handy all right and then we'll do some single leg hop and sticks okay so you hop and stick hop and stick hop and stick hop and stick okay so the whole idea here is you're getting takeoff and landing and being solid doing it <laughs> okay so let the brain figure out the movement but we want when we're out in the pitch when we're performing we want those movements to be really really good okay so i just did four on each side and the single leg hop and sticks so you you'd be totally justified to go around and do another round of pogos you could do some lateral zigzag pogos just for that bit of change of direction no problems that's all good the single leg hop and sticks we did are forwards that time that's called linear hop and sticks and we can do lateral ones then as well so start down at the end of the mat here and we go hop and stick it okay stick in that landing okay and we go hop and stick right to left oops okay that's fine there and now i'm going to go back on my right leg it probably looks a mirror image on the on the screen for you guys i'm going to go okay down that way you can pick about four or five hops at least i'm just running out of space here okay so you've got your linear hop and sticks and your lateral hop and sticks I wouldn't be doing any more than two sets of five anyway for those it's totally fine should be primed up nicely at that stage and then the last bit of a thing before we go out onto the pitch proper is the shuffle stick all right so you're gonna accelerate plant come back okay accelerate plant and come back so it's all about being stable you just accelerate plant stable okay you can even hop into it a little bit if you want sticking into that landing really nice and solid okay and there's nothing wrong with doing that to the side then as well okay so you're just running from side to side run stick okay So you can make it a bit more realistic okay 
So you're priming the body for those lateral movements and you would be completely justified to do zigzag versions of that or anything you wanted to do. So that's like a full body activation going through the slower muscle group activations to upper body stuff as well uh, to a bit of power for ready for cutting and weaving that's involved in most pitch sports. So uh, find should be good, should find it helpful and let your comments below and share away. Take it easy.